When I open the appraisal worksheet, my screen looks like this. On the left hand side is my scheme appraisal and on the right various key performance indicators and a feature that allows us to sensitivity test the appraisal result for a percentage change in any of the seven primary inputs that are listed halfway down the page. How you use that facility is explained in the help notes behind the button at the top corner of the page. I'm not going to demonstrate that in this screencast, but it's very simple to use. First, I want to highlight the way in which the DVM compares the actual residual profit from my development project with a target profit margin that I set in cells H37 to H39 at the bottom left of your screen. When you receive your copy of the DVM, there will be default settings in these cells, but those can be changed if you think that a different percentage margin is appropriate. Based on the target percentages in those three cells, the DVM calculates a total target profit for the development, which is displayed in cell E36, and compares that in G35 with the actual profit that the appraisal is showing in G32. The figure in G32 is simply the residual profit arrived at by deducting all the costs in column G from the total development revenue in G12. In this case, my financial appraisal is showing that the development should achieve the target margin with a very small surplus over and above that of £265. Looking at the top of the appraisal summary, we can confirm that 20% of the dwellings are affordable homes in line with planning policy. And thirdly, the scheme is meeting the Section 106 obligations that we set on the cost sheet based on planning policy requirements. So we conclude that we have a development here that is policy compliant and viable. If the appraisal sheet had revealed a shortfall on target profit in G35, we might need to consider whether any of the costs or values we have used in our appraisal could be varied in order to achieve viability. Is the total site value capable of change, for example? Because the appraisal might be showing that the value we initially ascribed to the land makes the project unviable. If the land is being purchased in a single tranche, it's very easy to experiment with changes in the total site value using cell M5 on the appraisal sheet. The help notes explain how to do this. Fourthly on this page, the finance costs shown in my appraisal are calculated from the cash flow, as we will see in a moment. In fact, all costs and values on the appraisal sheet have been drawn from the cash flow, which is what one might term the DVM's engine room. In this first screenshot from the cash flow worksheet, we see how revenue from sales and build costs have been distributed in the way that we determined when completing the resi element sheets. But compared with the screenshots in that earlier screencast video, we now have land and site costs in the cash flow too. Note that the lion's share of site costs comes into our cash flow at month one, as we specified on the land workshop, worksheet, and those costs relating to the second tranche of land appear in month 13, two months before build costs on our second resi element begin. Thirdly, other costs below that in the cash flow have been distributed in the way that I specified on the costs worksheet. See, for example, the distribution of site preparation costs on row 60 and the cost of my primary estate road on row 63. Scrolling down, we see how the DVM calculates the finance costs for our appraisal. In practice, the DVM applies the same rate of interest to borrowed funds as to those drawn from the developer's equity, so the breakdown between those two resource categories is irrelevant. But the DVM was designed in this way so that different rates could be applied to borrowed funds and to equity, if required. Viability appraisals for planning purposes now tend to use an all-in rate of interest, which includes an allowance for the lender's typical arrangement, exit and monitoring fees. But the DVM does have the facility to input those separately 
if required. Going back to the appraisal sheet, I want to highlight three other points. At the top right of your screen, the DVM has set out some benchmark data that can be useful in comparing certain costs and building densities with other schemes that have taken or are taking place across the region. Lower down, against point number six, we have various key performance indicators that will be relevant to most developers and property professionals. The DVM generates these automatically based on the various costs, values and other inputs to the appraisal. Finally, the DVM will generate sensitivity tables for a project. If, a, if I click the button highlighted with number seven in this screenshot, because there are so many separate inputs and variables in our viability appraisal, it's important to have a picture of how sensitive the appraisal result might be to small incremental changes in the primary inputs. This screenshot is only a partial view of the whole sensitivity table that the DVM displayed when I clicked the button on the appraisal sheet. If I tried to show you the whole table on one screen, it would be impossible to read. However, this screenshot illustrates how the developer's profit would be affected by percentage changes in the revenue from open market homes across the top of the screen and build costs, including external costs, down the left hand side. The upper half of the table shows how those percentage changes would affect the developer's profit in absolute terms. The lower half shows what that profit then represents as a percentage of gross development value. We can see that if market values rise, moving to the right of the screen, the developer's profit also increases, as you would expect. Conversely, if values fall, so does the profit from the scheme. Likewise, if construction costs are greater or less than those we have factored into our appraisal, the table shows how this could affect the profit margin. At the bottom left-hand corner of the tables, the level of profit shown will be significantly less than the margin that a developer will aspire to when deciding whether or not to undertake a project. But that is counterbalanced, of course, by the chance of achieving more than the target profit margin if things go well, as illustrated in the upper right-hand quadrant of the tables. The important thing here is that the table should not show too great a risk of the profit making a loss, which could also make it difficult to fund. That completes the screencasts I've made to explain how the DVM works. Thank you for watching. I hope they've been helpful.